Hello, and welcome back to Polytoots. Uh, we're going to be doing crystals today because at least one person has asked for it, uh, but he's asked twice, so um, I think I think that counts uh, for more. Although this isn't the first time uh, that I've been asked to do some sort of shader magic to make nice looking crystals, and the first thing that kind of crosses my mind is, is you don't need uh, a fancy shader to make nice looking crystals. Uh, in fact, oftentimes you need just the most primitive uh, shader that you can imagine. Um, so we're going to run through some examples. Uh, some There's uh, one that isn't here, which which uh, I'll just create as, as, as I kind of go along. But uh, to kind of kick it off, obviously, kind of depending on the style that you're going for, um, the, uh, the first example I have here is just a self-lit. So this isn't uh, a shader that I've had to make. It's just a standard material. Uh, I am using the HDRP, but regardless of whatever you're using, even like the uh, like the non preview stuff, um, this is just a self lit material. Um, in fact, it wouldn't even need the emission. Uh, I just have that in there because because I had already p painted it, so um, that is that is there at least. So all 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 all, all that's doing is uh, just this little kind of glow in here. Uh, the actual material itself. Um, won't be affected by lighting. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, so then moving on, this is also not a shader. This is just a standard material. Uh, and all I've done is I've just used uh, metallic and smoothness and I've just ramped those up to one. And oftentimes um, for a lot of stuff, this is kind of all you need to do. Um, you don't even need an albedo or a normal map. And I can prove that now. If I just duplicate this crystal. By the way, uh, I will be providing this crystal and all, all, all of the textures. I don't know why, you probably don't need it, but uh, you know, maybe it's a, a thank you for the 1000 subscribers. Uh, so yeah, you can have that. Do what you want, sell it somewhere, I don't mind. Um, yeah, so crystal face set it. I'm just going to basically, because uh, this was a sculpted model that I've normal mapped, uh, if I bring this in, yeah. So because it's a sculpt and a bake, and it relies on normal maps for all of the uh, the sort of normal information, uh, the smoothing groups of this are all s set to one. So um, we're going to just undo that uh, from angle. Okay, so probably normals calculate. Okay, so there we go. So this is what the model would look like if it was completely sort of um, unsmoothed. Uh, and from here, you can actually just. Uh, da, 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 da. I imagine most people watching this are skipping past this point because this is pretty basic. Um, so let's just stick this guy on there. I think this is actually made up of a few parts, which is annoying. So we'll just make him red and just crank up that metallic and that smoothness. Maybe bring the smoothness a little bit down. Um, but there you go. I mean, there you are. That's a that's a convincing crystal in any game. Uh, but yeah, so that's just there as as, as an example. And I'm just sh showing you that um, uh, mine is actually normal mapped with a texture, which you know it it's nicer, but it's not it's not required. Um, so yeah, moving on a bit, we're now actually going to start to get into the uh, the actual things you might want to do with a shader. And the first one, uh, many of you may recognize the effect. It's a simple Fresnel. Uh, so if I just edit shader, take a look at this. So um, just to kind of make things um, uh, completely sort of transparent, there's my albedo, my normals, and then this is basically everything that I'm doing with, with my emission. Uh, this is my actual emissive texture, which um, I don't know if it's confusing or not. I'll actually just show you it. Um, so it's just, well, I mean, that's without context. So this is the uh, albedo of the crystal, which has been um, lovingly hand painted. Uh, so then th that's the emission. So it's basically, I've just created some light areas sort of down in the uh, crevices or the crevasses. I don't know how you would say that. I don't think anybody would actually say crevasse. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all that emission is doing. Um, and then I am just adding on, well, multiplying on a Fresnel effect at the end. Um, and I have a property here just to control its size. 
And then after I add that through my texture, which again is optional, I have another multiply just to control its strength here with this uh, vector one property. And then lastly, I multiply again, just with a color property, just so I can actually change uh, the color of the Fresnel itself. So if I were to just grab this, uh, you know, I can change, I can change this to whatever I want. Um, that's actually really nice. Wow. Okay, so let's, uh, let's close that down. Don't need that. Uh, next up, we have pr pretty much the same thing, just the inverse. And I've also got a little um, animation going on because oftentimes in games, you know, you'll, you'll have some sort of uh, power crystal thing and it will glow because that's what magical crystals do, you know? So let's just uh, have a look at this. And let's just zoom in on this guy here so we can see what's going on. So pretty much the same as before with the um, albedo and there's my normal. Oh, um, I probably should have mentioned this before. I don't, I do have a metallic texture, um, but it's just, it's kind of redundant. There's actually no need for it to exist uh, because you can just control whatever you want with a slider, unless you have a particularly mucky or a dirty cr crystal or something where you actually need to um, mask out some of the roughness and whatnot with the texture but anyway 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 um so yeah all this is is it's the exact same as the previous one the only difference is i've introduced a one minus so it's just flipped the fresnel effect around so it now it shines from the center outwards rather than the edges inward and for the actual sort of glow here it's just assign time uh, which i immediately clamp um, and then that's just m multiplied by everything else. So it's actually, it's just kind of this basically, um, which I just add on to everything else. Uh, you could, I suppose, if I were to uh, do something like this, get rid of that, you can create this effect. So it's a lot more obvious. I'll actually add this on to the whole thing because before this um, glow animation, it was only applying to my emissive texture. Uh, but if you wanted it to kind of apply to the whole thing, um, then you can just introduce this uh, this time at the end. And so yeah, now it will actually do everything. And the reason I have the clamp is because I don't want the um, the sign to go below zero because it will go up to one and then t to minus one and then up to one again. And I want to stop it from doing that. So uh, that's why I have the clamp. If you don't have the clamp, I'll show you kind of what happens here. So I'll just save that and then edit the video because this takes five minutes actually wait, wait 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 scratch that i think actually all that will do is uh basically the same as what we're seeing now if i take this back to where it was um, all of this is just to show you uh what happens if you don't use the clamp it's just i don't think it would work if i put it at the end so i'm going to add it to just my emissive texture so let's actually save that and remember this is not with the clamp Okay, so there, you see, it's basically um, creating like the inverse of the emission because it's going, you know, from my, from from one to minus one. Uh, although it actually kind of looks okay, but um, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so let's just, I'm going to just put this back where it was at the end. Okay, there we go. Um, so if you wanted to, um, I, this isn't really related to crystals at all uh, at this point, but um, if you've ever used like a sign time to try and pulse some sort of emission, it's usually where you, you would find something like this. I mean, not to say that there aren't any other uses for it, but um, it's a common one. You might have run into the issue where you can't increase the speed because it doesn't act like a normal sort of time node where you just multiply it by a vector because uh, that just increases the speed at which it kind of fades in and out but it doesn't actually change anything uh, to the entirety of it in fact uh, if i were to just prove that to you come on now uh, so if we multiply this get down a vector one and i'll just give this um I don't know, like quite a high value 10 or something and so we'll feed that through and then we'll save this. Okay, so now you can see that the actual, like the overall duration hasn't changed. It's just as it fades in and out is a lot more snappier. Uh, so if you wanted to actually create some sort of um, property that controlled the, uh, the pulse speed of something like this, then um, actually what we'll do is we'll keep the time node uh, but we will actually get a sign node 
And what you want to do is uh, let's just reuse this uh, multiply and the vector. So we'll have time multiplied by, by a vector. So this is your standard kind of speed s setup. So, you know, um, didn't want to convert to subgraph. Uh, convert the property, and we'll just call this pulse speed. Uh, and that's what you kind of hook through the the sign. So if I default that to one, um, yeah, still go through the clamp. That should be fine. So we'll save this. So now, if we actually grab our material, uh, we can get the pulse speed, crank it up to ten or something. So now it will actually uh, pulse. Um, and if you wanted to get like a little crazy, what you can actually do is uh, you can get a random range and uh, we can introduce the, I think it's the time, and then zero, let's say zero to, I don't know, three. And then stick that into your sign. And let's save that. Okay, so there you go. Um, and this is essentially how you do uh, flickering lights and not a crystal, so I don't know why. I am showing you that, but uh, I just, I think it's cool. Um, so anyway, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that, and let's actually move on to the other one. Uh, and let's take that down before it gives me epilepsy. Okay, so this last one, um, this is probably the more complicated one. The, the, the idea behind this one is to actually try and create a bit of a, a parallax, and I mean a bit, like I use like one step of a parallax uh, because for crystals it's quite nice because it just makes it look like there is sort of something inside but um, there's no need to kind of do um, a whole lot more um, you can if you want have multiple iterations of the other uh, parallax it's entirely up to you but I think after a certain point it probably just ends up looking a bit like ice um, and I guess between crystals and ice there's you know there's not that much of a difference but um, if it's not too obvious as to what's sort of happening here with like that cloudy thing in there. Uh, I have a different one here. Um, so yeah, the idea is it just sort of looks a bit like there is something inside uh, and I can control its sort of strength as well if I didn't want it to, uh, to be so in your face. Um, but yeah, the, um, the actual map that I've ended up using is just uh, like a standard clouds render from uh, Photoshop. It's kind of, it's kind of a nice effect, uh, and it gives like an overall, like a more kind of realistic tone I find to the crystal. Like out of all of these, even though, you know, these ones do have the um, metalness and the smoothness, uh, they still, you know, they, they don't look I think as convincing uh, as this crystal over here. But yeah, so anyway, let's take a look at the shader on that one. Uh, edit shader. Uh, yeah, so again, there's my albedo, my normals, and my emission. And uh, for this one, the actual, this like one layer of parallax, uh, I am just adding that onto my albedo. You can add it onto the emission instead. You know, it's entirely up to you. You can you can do whatever you want. But yeah, it's pretty, pr pretty simple. Start with the, uh, the actual texture, like pr property that I want to use uh, for my parallax effect. Uh, and then it's basically just uh, a view direction, which you set the tangent, multiply that by a property, which is actually the offset amount, which I don't know if I um, showed you or not, but uh, so if I set this back to say zero, um, then it will actually, it won't look like there's anything inside anymore. It will almost be like it's like it's, it's, it's actually on the surface because it has no offset. Uh, and if you start to actually offset it a bit, um, it starts to actually look like it's kind of going inside the mesh that you have, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's that's what you would multiply that with, that property. And then you just plug those three into a tiling and offset node. Obviously it would go into offset because that's what we're controlling, an offset. And that goes into the UVs of the texture that you want. And then all I do is uh, I could have just straight added it to the albedo, um, but I did just run it through a multiply at the end um, just to control its strength so I can, you know, make it stand out more or, or not. Uh, and you may have noticed that I am just using the red channel uh, only because my intention was to only use uh, a grayscale image. But I suppose in theory there's no reason that you couldn't actually use full RGB color. So yeah, that's uh, I think, I mean that's pretty much it. 
Uh, if you do want to learn how to do uh, multiple sort of iterations or levels of parallax, I recommend checking out uh, a YouTube channel by the name of uh, binary impact because um, he has uh, it's a great uh, cracked ice tutorial that kind of goes through um, like, I think it's about sort of like 10 iterations of a parallax effect and uh, he also will show you how to uh, to convert things into subgraphs which is which is that thing that I almost accidentally did but I don't want to do it's essentially you know condensing things down so that you don't have to have loads of these nodes all over the place so you can just um, have them all as kind of one. Um, in fact, I could probably just do... I don't want to grab that one. You don't want to include your pr properties at all, but so if I were to grab this, for example, and convert that to a subgraph, and that will just basically turn that into a single node. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, so check out Binary Impact. And for me, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, save, yeah. So to the one guy that asked me twice uh, to make a Crystal Shader tutorial, uh, I hope this kind of fits the bill. So yeah, there we are, Crystals. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.